Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here, and welcome to number three in my new series of watercolour tips. This is the third in the series, so have a look at the playlist on our channel for watercolour tips. This is number three, and it will be showing you how to create clear plastic overlays so that you can try out ideas on your paintings without risking spoiling the composition if it doesn't work. Because sometimes we get these ideas and we think that something's going to work out and actually when we try it out it doesn't look as good as we thought it would or if it doesn't look right it's not the right size it's not the right shape or position and if we've painted it onto our painting then there's no going back you can also use this method if like me you do a regular or daily sky practice and you can then try out ideas using these clear plastic overlays on your sky practice pieces um, without worrying about ruining them. And you can select just the right idea and then go ahead with something that you know is going to work. First, I'll show you a couple of examples of these clear overlays and then I'll show you how I make them. So the first example for this wash is going to be trying out on the plastic um, some geese silhouettes, flying geese. You can see that I can move the overlay and you can quite clearly see whether it's going to suit the painting, where it should be positioned. Um, they're clear so I can turn them over and have them flying in the opposite direction if I think that looks better. And I can decide whether or not I want to put something like that onto the painting. Move it around, get the size right, the position right, uh, without ruining the painting by sort of trying an idea out and thinking, oh, it doesn't look as good as I thought. Um, we could try the generic simple suggestions of birds or gulls in this case. Um, larger in the foreground, dwindling to little tiny marks in the background. And again, you can see how positioning these over the wash straight away, it's bringing the scene to life. And we can see that both of these ideas would work on this wash. Um, you could position them wherever you prefer. Again, it's plastic, so you could turn uh, the plastic around and so that you could place them flying um, from left to right if you wanted to. So how do I make them? Well, I'm simply reusing some plastic packaging um, that I got some foam board in and I'm going to use a permanent marker and I'm going to just simply trace over a design that I like or maybe something from a previous painting that I like and for this I'm going to be using a Sharpie. They're nice and cheap, it's a permanent marker and it will write on plastic. But you can use clear tracing paper or clear acetate, anything like that that's clear and that will, um, that a, a sort of um, permanent marker will dry onto will work for this. So I'll first show you with this painting, we'll zoom in and I quite like the shape of the figures here, this couple turned out quite nicely. So in order to make sure that I can repeat this kind of um, figure arrangement on another painting if I want to, I'm going to make a plastic overlay. So I'm just going to lay the plastic or tracing paper or whatever you've got over the figure and then go over the figure. You could just do an outline if you wanted to, but because this couple is silhouetted, I'm just going to sort of color it in with the Sharpie, being sure to, to make sure I get it quite accurate. And then once I've done this, I can do this again with other features and then keep these overlays in a folder or a file or something like that and then use them whenever I want to say try out a figure or anything like that and you can build up a library of these overlays from your own work or from your own resources so you can see here placing the figures on the page you can see whether or not figures would work in the context um, of this background wash 
I'll make one more for you. Um, I really like the way these um, bare trees have turned out. And so I want to save that shape and I'm sure I can reuse it. So again, I take my clear uh, plastic or tracing paper or acetate, uh, my permanent marker, and just draw over the shape of the trees. Keeping it quite simple, I'm tapering off my um, strokes just to get some slightly finer lines so that then I will remember when I come to use my clear plastic overlay again that that's how I want to um, present these trees and paint them. So that's the tree just about finished. I didn't show all of it because it can take a little while. And, um, and that there it is, it's safely transferred onto my clear piece of plastic. And then um, I can try that out on my other painting, on my wash. Um, you can see here, it's, you know, it's turned out well. I'm putting it against a white background, you can see quite clearly that I've just got this really nice shape and it can be placed onto the wash. Again, repositioned wherever I want it. Um, I don't want it in the middle, but on one of the sides. I don't want that side because I actually like that sort of shadowy wash. But here, I think, so because the winter trees, the filigree of branches, you can see that lovely um, lavender part of the sky through. So I think that's quite a nice pla place for if I was going to be painting trees onto the painting, then I'd probably put them there. And we can continue, we can build up a scene if we want to, if we've got enough of these overlays in our overlay library. Let's put the geese on and the figures. I'm sure this is going to be a bit of overkill, but this is just to kind of give you an idea of how you can try things out without committing to any of them. So I think if I remove the geese, because that is a bit of overkill, and then just leave the figures, maybe reposition them a little bit. And if I was going to paint that scene, I would then draw the tree and the figures or simply trace them and um, trace them onto the wash. So I hope that watercolour tip has been useful. If you have any sort of similar ways that you try out ideas on your paintings, um, please let us know and share in the comments. I'm sure viewers and myself would love to read them. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. It's free to do and it really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon and welcome to all the new Patreon members on myself and Morgana's site. If you'd like to support the channel, please follow the links below to Morgana's Patreon or mine. Thanks again, and I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.